Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? And welcome to day seven of Dunk Every Day. In today's video, I'm going to talk about four vertical jump techniques that you could be using to get a higher, bouncier vertical jump. I am also, at the end of this video, going to talk about strength training periodization and how you can periodize your training plan for best results. But before I give you those four vertical jump techniques, I just very quickly wanna talk about my dunk session for today. Today was a medium intensity day, meaning that I had seven 76 jumps total, starting very low intensity and going up to medium intensity, so I'm not doing max jumps. I went from eight feet all the way up until nine, six today. My ankle was feeling pretty good. My previous record after this recent ankle injury in December was nine foot three inches. So today I got nine foot six inches off of each approach. So I was feeling really good. So that was my dunk session for today, day seven, and we are making progress. Now, what are these four vertical jump techniques that you can use to increase your balance? They go sort of in order. The first vertical jump technique is using an eccentric focus when you do your lifts or your movements. What you are going to do is spend four to five seconds on the way down on the eccentric portion of the movement, and then you are going to reverse the movement and explode up as fast as possible on the concentric for that force production. And what this is going to do is teach your body to absorb force, and the more force that your body can absorb, the more force your body can produce, because if you can't absorb absorb the force, there's no way that your body can redirect that force and produce that force in a concentric movement, i.e. a vertical jump. So that is technique number one. And normally the eccentric focus comes in the beginning of your training, in the first block of your training, and then you can build on top of that as you move forward. The second technique for your training is an isometric focus. And sometimes you can flip flop the eccentric and the isometric. You could really do either one of these first, but when it comes to weight training, using an isometric focus, what you're going to do is actively pull the weight or pull the bar, or even if you're just using body weight, pull your body down as quickly as you can. Stop your body as fast as possible, normally in a joint angle. So the specific angle of your hips, your knees, and your ankles that you use when you are doing a vertical jump, you're gonna stop in that joint angle. You're gonna hold the isometric for four to five seconds, and then you're going to explode back up for the concentric portion of the rep as fast as you possibly can. When you perform an exercise with an isometric focus, you are teaching your body not only to decelerate more efficiently, to produce more force more efficiently, but most importantly, you are teaching your body to recruit more muscle fibers, more motor units to use in any lift, or any exercise or any dynamic sporting action like a sprint or a run or a cut or a vertical jump. And what I mean by that, if you don't quite understand that, is imagine that little Jimmy is stuck under a car. Little Jimmy's wiffle ball rolled under a car and he crawls under there to get it and then he gets stuck and he's calling for his mom and his mom comes and she's trying to lift up the car. Obviously, little Jimmy's mother can't lift up a car, so she calls for help and she gets the neighbors and then these neighbors and now we have four, five, six people all trying to lift up this car and we lift it up just enough for little Jimmy to crawl out. That is the same thing that's happening when you are doing an isometric contraction. As you hold in an isometric position, the muscle fibers are fatiguing, they are failing, and they are recruiting on more muscle fibers to help hold in that position or in that contraction. And essentially, the more muscle fibers, the more motor units that you can recruit, that is going to transfer to your dynamic sporting action when you're trying to run and jump and sprint and do all the things that you're going to do when you play in your basketball games. You will be more efficient at those movements when you practice it and you work on it and you use these techniques in the weight room. The third technique that I have for you, I like to call reversal reps. So really what this is, is just going down and up as fast as possible. So the first technique was an eccentric focus. So you're going down slow and then up as fast as possible. Then we had an isometric focus where you're going down quickly, decelerating as quickly as you can, holding for four to five seconds seconds and then exploding back up. Now we have reversal reps and I just like to use that term for the athletes that I train because I just tell them go down as fast as possible, reverse the motion and come up as fast as possible. But really this is just a concentric focused rep. So right now I will put on the screen two of my athletes who I often use reversal reps with because
because we've gone through the eccentrics, we've gone through a lot of the isometrics, although we may come back and touch on those from time to time, but we are doing reversal reps and normally we do these with compound movements like a squat or a trap bar deadlift or a rear foot elevated split squat. So in the eccentric phase, we were teaching our body to absorb force so that we are better at producing force. In the isometric phase, we were teaching our body to decelerate more efficiently, to produce force more efficiently, and to recruit more motor units, more muscle fibers for any given lift or dynamic sporting action. During these reversal reps, we are essentially teaching the stretch shortening cycle to run as efficiently as possible. We want to use load while we are going down and up as fast as possible, doing these reversal reps so that the stretch shortening cycle and the stretch reflex work as efficiently as possible to give us a higher vertical jump. So we train this way so that in our dynamic sporting actions like sprinting and playing basketball, we can be more efficient and we can jump higher and dunk on the competition. The fourth and final technique that I have for you is called timed drop-off sets. And normally I don't do timed drop-off until I do eccentric and isometric and reversal reps first. So this is the fourth phase of my program. And this comes at the very end after an athlete has built a solid foundation. What the athletes would do is they would do a compound lift like a squat or a trap bar deadlift or a rear foot elevated split squat. But you can also do this with upper body. You can do it with really any exercise that you want. It just works best with compound movements. But essentially what you're going to be doing is trying to get as many reps as you can in a set period of time. So let's say you have 10 seconds to get as many reps of joint angle specific back squat as you can. Let's say you get 12 reps in 10 seconds. We continue to do that, trying to go as fast as we possibly can. And by the end of the phase, let's say you can get 14 reps in 10 seconds. So you went from 12 reps in 10 seconds to 14 reps in 10 seconds. That means that we have efficiently increased your rate of force development while we were in this phase which is the goal of these time drop off sets. And now when you do these time drop off sets, it's best if you have a partner to say go and stop and they are just timing you, but it also works. I do this myself sometimes and I just set the timer for 20 seconds and then I watch it. And as soon as it hits 10 seconds, I start my set. And then when the timer goes off or it hits zero, then I stop my set and I track how many reps I got in that 10 second period of time. You can also do this for five seconds or 15 seconds, but 10 seconds is really the sweet spot. 15 seconds sometimes is too long and five seconds is too short. And you can't go too heavy on this because you don't wanna go so heavy that you fail before the time is up. So 40 to 60% of your one rep max, normally in a joint angle, is your best bet here. Now, what I do wanna talk about in detail in a future episode of this Dunk Every Day series is your strength training periodization. And I'll go into more detail if you guys want me to, leave a comment down below if you want me to go into more detail about this. But if you are creating your own programming, Normally, if you want to increase your vertical jump, your programming blocks or phases would go like this. You would first do some hypertrophy work. Then after the hypertrophy work, after that phase is over, you do that for say three to six to eight weeks. After that is over, then you have a strength phase for three to eight weeks. Then after that, you would have a power phase for three to eight weeks, and then you would have a speed phase for three to eight weeks. And these build off of one another. So you get your hypertrophy, your volume, you build your base foundation, then you build strength on top of that, then you build power, and then you have speed. So you're taking from that strength and you are turning that strength into speed and explosiveness and power and vertical jump. And that is the best way that I have found to schedule out my blocks of training. And one thing that I do wanna mention is that, let's say you do your strength phase and then you get into your power and your speed phase, you do want to do strength workouts, normally every fourth or fifth workout so that you don't lose the strength that you built. Because if you stop lifting heavy, if you stop training for strength, eventually your strength is gonna go down when you're in the power phase and the speed phase, unless you touch on it every once in a while and then you will maintain that strength. So anyways, let me know if you guys want me to do a full video on how to block out your training and build your own phases if you are making your own training. Or to take all the guesswork out of it, I will link my programs down below. I have many vertical jump programs, Beyond the Rim 1, Beyond the Rim 2, Beyond the Rim 3, and then Beyond the Rim 4, I don't really give out anymore. I have upper body programs, upper body athlete 1, 2, 3, and 4. I have knee programs if you have any knee pain. So those will all be linked down below in the description for you and in the pinned comment of this video. But anyways, I will see you guys in tomorrow's video for Dunk Every Day, Day 8. I've been to myself just me lately. I don't need a lot. I don't need a lot, no. Me and the fan, few friends ain't playing. I don't speak a lot, and I, and I, and I can't stop. And I, and I, and I can't stop. And I, and I.
and I, and I can't stop